Welcome everyone to another Adobe InDesign tutorial. I'm your host, Elias Arantopoulos. This time around, I will teach you how to create an interactive image gallery for your EPUB. Up next. So inside Adobe InDesign with the document open, fully styled and properly organized with layers, a file that you can download below the video description if you wish to follow along. So the scenario here is for the user to tap to this gallery icon and in turn that will trigger the slideshow gallery. So for example, this is the first slide, the second, the third and the fourth. And looking inside each of these slides, we can see that we have a heading, we have a brief description of the photo, we have the carousel indicators, we have text indicating its slide, a right arrow for the user to tap and go to the next slide, a left arrow for the user to tap to go to the previous slide, and finally, the close button for the user to return back to the contents page. And that's how I have organized this document inside Adobe InDesign. So for the slideshow to work properly, we need to move the contents of each of these layers to a brand new layer as a separate group. In this case, I'm just going to click on the plus icon to create a new layer. What's our target? Click once and then rename these two contents. Hit enter return. And then I'm just going to target the trigger layer here. That will shift select and then click and drag the contents inside the contents layer. Once they are inside here, just make sure that you group those layers, as I mentioned earlier. And we can do this inside the object menu by using the group command, or you can just use the keyboard shortcut. In this case, I will go ahead and rename this to trigger, because this is going to be the button that will trigger the slideshow. All right, great. Now, this layer here is empty. So let's go ahead and remove that and target the first slide. I'm just going to shift select all of these contents and then just click and drag. And as you do that, just make sure that you go to the right of the layer for this to work. Release that immediately. Let's go ahead and group those. I will target this layer and rename this to first slide. Let's do one more here. Let's go ahead and target the second slide. And by the way, this is empty. I'm just going to remove that. I will target this one. Shift select all of these contents and then click and drag and bring them inside the contents. Great. Now I will group those again and just rename this to second slide. There we go. And the process continues to be exactly the same for the remaining of the layers. So for this next step, what we're going to do is target specific layers, convert those into buttons and lay down the foundation for the interactivity. For example, inside the trigger layer, we have this clear frame. Again, I did this on purpose. So for the user to have more real estate to tap on. In this case, we're going to convert this clear frame into a button, which means we're going to go inside the window menu, interactive, and we're going to bring up the buttons and forms panel. This is going to be converted to a button. Let's go ahead and give it a relative name here. That will be trigger on my own here on my end. Just click away to be able to see the changes inside the layers panel. So this is the first button that the user would tap on. And after that, the first slide would be launched. So here we have this clear frame. This is to close the slideshow and return to the contents. So let's go ahead and target this, convert this to a button. I will rename this to exit BTN. Just click away. We have this clear frame that will be for the next slide. Let's convert this to a button. So that would be next slides. And then we have this clear frame. 
Again, let's convert this to a button and that will be the previous slide. All right, great. Things are looking fantastic. What do we do next? Well, we don't have to do the, the same thing for the rest of the layers here. What we need to do is target these, these buttons here. So I'm going to shift select, exit BTN, next slide, and the preview slide. Edit, I'm going to copy these, and then inside the second slide, just going to edit, paste in place. Now this is going to be positioned outside the second slide. All you have to do is just shift select, click and drag and move them inside the second slide. Just make sure you do this, move it to the right of the layer. And we're going to do the same for the third slide. So edit menu, paste in place, shift select those, twirl down to open the third slide, click and drag those inside. We have one more to go for this one. Edit, paste in place, shift select, click and drag those inside. In this case, I didn't do a good job. All I'm just going to do is just click and bring those up right there. There we go. And now everything's ready for us to go to the next step and create the interactivity. So for this step, what we're going to do is create a multi-state object. But before I do that, what I need to do is make sure that these layers are in order and they are not right now, which means the user first will tap on the trigger to launch the first slide, which means the slide will follow that, the first slide, then the second slide will follow, and then the third slide and so on. All I'm gonna do is just shift select all of these slides there we go. And then inside the window menu, I will bring up the object states panel. At the very bottom, we're going to click on the plus icon to convert this selection to a multi-state object. So go ahead and click on the plus icon. And as you can see, since I did a great job organizing myself inside the layers panel, now everything comes up in order. So the triggers first, first slide and so on. We'll go ahead and give it an appropriate name here. Let's say Gallery MSO, and MSO is just an abbreviation for multi-state object. Great. Here is the multi-state object, and the first one is, let's go ahead and target this, is the trigger. So inside the layers panel, I will target the trigger button here. So for action, I'll click on the plus icon, and that will go to state. Well, it's gonna go and launch the first slide. Great. Now let's go ahead and target again the gallery MSO. And next up, we have the first slide. Great, let's target this. So first we have, I'm going to skip this, I'm gonna do this later. First we have the next slide. The next slide will have an action to go to a state, which is the second slide, all right? Because this is the first slide. So that will go to the next one, which is the second one. Then inside here, we also have the previous slide. That will go to state, and that will go loop back actually to the very last one. In this case, I'm just going to select the fourth slide. Let's go back to the gallery MSO, target the second slide, I will target the next slide for action that will go to state. Since we are on the second, then the user will tap to go to the third slide. And for the previous slide here, action go to state to the first slide. Target back the gallery MSO. I'm going to target the third slide. Inside here, I will target the next slide. That would take us to as an action to go to state, to the fourth slide, and the previous slide for an action that will go to state to the second slide. And I believe we have one more to go here, which is the fourth slide. Target this inside the next slide. That will go back to the first slide. So for an action, go to state, slide number one, 
and the previous slide would target good state slide number three i believe we finished with that let's go ahead and target again the gallery mso and then just target the first object state in this case i will go up to the window menu interactive and i'm going to bring up the epub interactive to preview and see what i've done so far in this case i will click to play the preview there we go the user will tap on the gallery here here is the very first slide next 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 you see it loops back let's do this again this will look back to the third and so on things working fantastic what we need to do now is we need to go back to the first slide and target the exit btn that will have an action to go to state to trigger click back on the gallery mso target the second slide target the exit btn action go to state trigger back on the mso target the third slide target the exit button again that will go to state the trigger and finally we have one more to go target the fourth slide the fourth state target the exit action go to state trigger and that should be it actually let's go ahead and again test our work inside the window menu interactive epub interactivity preview press to play for the preview let's go ahead and test that next next close that up let's bring this up again close that up and here we go so this is the slicer works perfectly fine what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and export this and then see our work inside the tablet so our InDesign document and interactivity works fantastic. It's fully functional and you are ready to export our work. In this case, I will go up to the file menu and choose to export. For save as type, go ahead and choose the EPUB fixed layout and then click to save. And now we are presented with a fixed layout export options. In this case, I'm just going to click on the conversion settings here we can control the resolution of the images that are exported out of InDesign. For example, I'm going to set the resolution to 150 pixels per inch. And for the JPEG options and for the image quality, I'm going to go ahead and set this to high. But at the end of the day, you have to experiment with the file size of your EPUB and see what works on your end. I'm just going to click OK. And now we are presented with this message, which I will go ahead and ignore that because I have already tested my work using the EPUB interactivity preview. And now the EPUB is ready to be viewed inside your iPad. Thank you everyone for visiting my channel listening to the inspired lectures do not forget to subscribe and most of all share the knowledge